Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about design for local area networks. So that could be for a single building, or it could be several buildings within a few hundred meters of each other on the same local campus. We're not talking about wide area networks here, like if you've got a building in New York and another one in Houston or Singapore. We'll talk about wide area networks in a later section. So just local area networks in this section. The campus land should be designed for scalability to support growth, also for performance and security. And to aid in a best practice design process, the network topology is split into access, distribution, and core layers when we're doing the design. The layers have their own design principles and characteristics that we'll talk about in this lecture. So first up, the access layer. So you can see in the example local area network here, I've got a main building in my campus and I've also got separate building one as well. Both of those buildings will have multiple access layer switches. And the access layer switch is where your end hosts plug in. Now in the diagram, I've just got one host plugged into each switch just because I've only got so much room on the slide here. Obviously, in the real world, you would have multiple hosts plugged into the same switch. So maybe in the main building, we've got four switches there. Maybe a couple of them on, are on the ground floor. Switch three is on the first floor and switch four is on the second floor, for example. And we're gonna have multiple hosts plugged into their local switch. And we're gonna have the same kind of thing in building one. So your end hosts, such as your desktop computers, your servers and IP phones, always connect into the network at the access layer. It's designed to have a high port count at an affordable cost to support lots of end hosts. Desktop computers typically have only one network interface card, so they can only connect into one switch, or maybe if they're on wireless, they'll connect into one wireless access point. Servers, however, will often have dual NICs to give them some extra redundancy, so they will connect into a pair of redundant access layer switches. And your client access security measures, such as port security, that we'll discuss in a later section, are enabled at the access layer. The next layer up is the distribution layer. So you can see when we're doing our campus LAN design, we follow a hierarchical model. So the end hosts plug in at the access layer, and then at the level above the access layer, we have our distribution layer switches. And the access layer switches uplink to the distribution layer switches. Notice that the access layer switches are not usually connected to each other. They connect upstream to the distribution layer switches. The distribution layer switches serve as an aggregation point for the access layer and provide additional scalability in our local area network. They are typically deployed in redundant pairs. We don't want to have a single point of failure at the distribution layer. That would maybe be acceptable in a very small campus, but any kind of normal size of campus, you're going to want to have d redundant distribution layer switches organized in pairs. So if one of them goes out, your clients have still got connectivity. The, so the downstream access layer switches are connected to both of the pairs of the distribution layer switches. If I could go back a slide, you see all my access layer switches here. They've got uplinks to distribution layer switch one and distribution layer switch two. And you see that both buildings are designed the same. So my main building has got its access layer switches and its redundant distribution layer switches. And I've got the same thing in building one. 
your end hosts connecting at the access layer, end hosts do not typically connect into the distribution layer switches directly. And what we do at the distribution layer, most software policy, such as quality of service policies, is enabled at the distribution layer. The next layer we have up is the core layer. So your distribution layer switches uplink to the core layer. Notice that we had our access layer and our distribution layer switches in both buildings. The core layer switches are just going to be in one building and it's the core layer switches that link all of your buildings together. So here we've got a pair of redundant core layer switches in the main building. And obviously your distribution layer switches uplink there. Your core layer switches, just like your distribution layer switches, are typically deployed in redundant pairs with your downstream distribution layer switches connected to both. Traffic between different parts of the campus travels through the core, so it is designed for speed and resiliency. Software policy slows the switch down, so it should be avoided in the core layer. That's why we did things like our QoS policy at the distribution layer. Any kind of software policy that you've got enabled on your switch causes the switch to have to think to enable that policy so it slows it down. The core layer, the main thing is speed and resiliency. We don't want anything slowing it down, so we minimize software policy on our core layer switches. In a smaller network, you could have a collapsed distribution and core layer. That is common because smaller campuses don't need the scalability of three separate layers. So in those cases, a collapsed distribution and core layer is used where the distribution and core layer functions are performed on the same hardware device. So this is what a collapsed distribution and core looks like. We don't have separate physical devices for the core and the distribution layer, we have a pair of switches here in our main building and they are being used as both the distribution and the core layer switches. So they fulfill the functions of both. So to summarize that, our end hosts plug in at the access layer. Our access layer switches are designed to support a high port count at an affordable cost, and we implement our LAN security policies on our access layer switches. Our access layer switches uplink to our distribution layer switches. We're going to have those organized in pairs to give us redundancy. We don't want to have a single point of failure, and our software policy are enabled at the distribution layer. The distribution layer switches form an aggregation point for all of our access layer switches. And finally, we have the core layer. The core layer is designed for speed and resiliency. The core layer is what connects all of your different buildings, distribution layer switches together. We don't want to slow our core layer down with software policies. Okay, that's it for the LAN design. See you in the next lecture where we'll start talking about VLANs. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.